So Coros has just announced they are kind of, sort of, but not entirely delaying the new Coros Dura Cycling GPS. This unit was announced last month, uh, and its core headline feature is really its battery life. It's its claim that it can get 120 hours, and that's before you count for the giant solar panel there on the forehead, which can go in theoretically like forever in the right amount of sun. Of course, I've got an entire preview hands-on video up in the corner there you can check out, which gets into all the details, but the gist of the video was it wasn't really ready yet. But we gotta fast forward to basically now, and more importantly next week. This was supposed to start shipping on July 15th to customers. But Coros has announced they found an issue with the mounting tabs on the back. Uh, and this can cause the mounting tabs to break in certain third party mounts. In the case of the mounting system, Coros adopted the Garmin quarter term mounts, which means that it's compatible with basically all of the mounts out there, except the Wahoo ones, which use a slightly tweaked version of the Garmin quarter term mount. Point being though that most mounts out there are Garmin quarter turn compatible and many people use third party mounts, including myself, like K-Edge mounts, Barfly mounts, things like that, where I want to mount action cameras on the bottom. With the Coros Dura mount, it's a nice mount, but you can't mount anything to the bottom and it may not fit all handlebars and there's plenty of other reasons why people want to use third party mounts. Point being, Coros is saying in some third party mounts, this can cause the mounting tabs to break. Whereas they know in their own mount, they don't see any problems in testing at all. Now, I don't know whether or not that's like true for realsies, but I'm gonna guess there's probably some truth to that. Uh, when I used the Dura in third party mounts, I found it a little bit loose compared to other units. Uh, just a little bit more play than I would have liked compared to other units in their third party mounts. So as a result, Coros is giving people that are pre-ordered three options. But I will caution you to listen to the video before deciding which option you want. The first option is to receive your Dura next week and its box and its mount included and all that kind of stuff. And then in September, you can swap out the unit down the road for a unit with a fixed mounting tab system. The second option is to receive the unit now, but get a three year warranty on those mounting tabs. So you're basically covered in either of those two scenarios, except if you broke it down the road, then you get it swapped out versus they're just gonna swap it out on front. And then the third final option is to simply cancel your order and then receive a refund. I'm not honestly sure why there wasn't a fourth option, which is simply delay your shipment until September, as opposed to all the back and forth and stuff like that. But that's neither here nor there. So then the question is, should you receive your unit next week if you choose to do that? And that's where things get into a bit of a pickle. So as a bit of backstory here, they told me reviewers that they would have a final production firmware on or about July 9th uh, that we could start testing for the July 15th date. Uh, and indeed a firmware dropped late on the night of July 8th uh, that was gonna be that final firmware. I went out for a ride, a couple hour ride with it, and it, it was not awesome. It didn't really fix a lot of my issues, in fact. And so about 80% of the churns missed churn notifications entirely. Like it just never told me the churn notifications were there. Uh, there were sticky watts all over the place in the power meter file recording, which means that basically the power meter data is useless from like an analytics standpoint. And then there's plenty of other quirks as well. Like the map page would get inverted randomly at times. And uh, there's all sorts of app disconnect issues and, and stuff like that. But there is to their credit, one thing they did address in my feedback, which is that you no longer have to manually choose to reroute. Uh, now keep in mind that the Coros Dura requires a phone to do any sort of rerouting. Uh, there's no rerouting on the unit itself. Um, so if you're out of cellular coverage, for example, that won't work either because it actually depends on the cloud for that. Um, but in my case, I was within cellular coverage and have the app working and stuff like that. Uh, and so when you miss a churn, uh, now within about 10 seconds, it'll automatically start to reroute you to catch up to the route up ahead, just like all the bike computers out there. Previously, you had to go ahead and wait like a long time, like it was like 30 to 40 seconds uh, before it basically told you, hey, now you have an option to reroute or not, and you had to manually confirm it, which is just a, a pain in the butt. So I'm glad to see Coros listen there and got rid of that problem, and it, now it's it's much cleaner there. Now, at the end of the ride, I shot all my feedback to Coros and was like, yeah, not really much better. Um, and they said there's another firmware coming on July 15th that should fix those issues. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. We'll have to find out then. Still, I think Coros would just kick this whole can down the road to September 15th and said, you know what? We got mounting tab issues. True or not, doesn't really matter. Call that the excuse and then deliver units in September and use that time to spend on software and really making the software better. I'm going to guess they're not gonna be able to fix the routing issues myself and others are seeing uh, in the next few days because it's been an issue for a month and a half now. And so it's unlikely they're gonna like solve that in the next few days if they haven't been able to solve it over the past month. 
Maybe they will, maybe they won't, I don't really know. I'm sticking with my like, fall is the time frame where this unit will have most of its bugs fixed, but really next spring is where it'll probably start to shine in terms of uh, all the kind of weird quirks that I've seen over the last little while. Which again, to be clear, I have a lot of confidence that Koros is gonna get this right and it's gonna cause a lot of heartache for their competitors. Uh, they really will. The big ticket item that it's gonna take realistically years to solve is on-device rerouting. Once Koros chooses to do that, right now they're sticking with the line that you must have cellular connectivity for rerouting. So if you go outside of cellular boundaries, this really doesn't work very well if you have to reroute in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but eventually they're gonna to have to change their mind because the market will tell them to. Uh, and when they do, that process, generally speaking, takes one to two years for most of these companies uh, to get to the point where the rerouting is functional uh, for cyclists out there. Rerouting is in incredibly difficult. It took Apple years to sort it out uh, and Apple Maps with a team of arguably thousands of people working on it. It's really tough to do for the entire world. So that aside, there's a lot of cool things Chorus is doing and that price point is amazing and battery life is uh, theoretically amazing. More on that in my final review. I'll wait for that to shake itself out there. Um, but again, I'm not sure when my final review is going to be, honestly, at this point. I don't really know what to say or do. Leave a comment down in the comment section if you have an idea. Should I release a review on or about the 15th with that final final firmware? Should I wait till September? Should I wait till next spring? Should I, I don't know, a Christmas gift? Who knows? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, it'll help me out in, in deciding. With that, have a good one.